Watching the nightly news Don't seem to find the rhythm Just wanna sing the blues Feels like a song that never stops Feels like it's never gonna Gotta get that fire fire back in my bones choosing joy can I get an amen man man I'm choosing joy I, this has been such a good series especially during the time that we're living in in 2020 it's been a little chaotic out there but I tell you studying this message every week getting prepared and then delivering these messages three times every Sunday uh, keeps you in an attitude a mind frame of choosing joy and I hope that you've gotten something out of this that has added Great value into your life today. Uh, when you came in, again, you should have received your communion elements. We're going to go ahead and kick off 21 days of prayer. It's August 2nd, baby. Woo! All right. 21 days of prayer. If you need communion elements, we would love to get them to you. Just throw your hands in the air. Let us know you need some. Uh, a lot of our praise team members, they don't have it. So over here, all the way to this far side over here, they're looking for some. So keep your hands up. We will get this to you. Uh, but what we want to do during 21 days of prayer and fasting is we want to take a time where we just invite God to be closer to us in our lives. I want to get closer to God throughout the next 21 days. They say it takes about 21 days to build a habit, right? And so we're going to build some habits uh, of just drawing near to our Lord. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to get the little top layer off there, uh, that little wafer on top, that little cracker. Uh, that is to represent the body that was given for you and I. So this is in remembrance of what Jesus did to get to us. Because let me say this, during 21 days of prayer, my whole theme this time is I just want to be close to God. That's my, my whole thing, like, I just want to be close to God. But I want to remind myself that God already did the work to get close to me. When he came to this earth, he left a perfect heaven. He came to an imperfect place called earth to give his body on a cross for you and me. So let's partake of this together, remembering this sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Now we'll take that second layer. This is a symbolic of the blood that was given for you and I for the payment of sin. Let us remind ourselves that Jesus did his work already to get to us. And, and let's just say, I want to be close to you, God. I want to be close to you. So let's, let's partake together. And on the count of three, I just want you to say, I want to be close to you, Lord. One, two, three. I want to be close to you, Lord. Come on, Rev Church style. One, two, three. I want to be close to you, Lord. I want to be close to you, Lord. 21 days of prayer and fasting. I don't know what you might choose to fast from during the next 21 days, uh, but whatever it may be, maybe you're fasting away from all drinks but water, right? Anytime you get those urges, those cravings uh, to have something that's not water, I want you to just say, God, I want to be close to you, Lord. I want to be close to you, Lord. I want to be close to you, Lord. You just make that your theme. I want to be close to you, Lord. 21 days of prayer, I'm going to tell you, it'll change you. I can't wait to see what we look like at the end of 21 days, man. I cannot wait to see. Some of us are going to look a, a lot healthier. I'm not just talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually, right? Uh, we're going to fast some things that are not good for us. If you're fasting from social media and you're going, how am I going to watch these you know, Facebook Lives? You guys do the daily devotionals. You do all that. Uh, listen, we are going to stream all that on YouTube. And so if you go to our website, RevChurchTX.com, It'll give you the links that you need to plug into the YouTube channel, and you can stay up to date with everything that we do here at the church, even if you're going away from social media during this fast. We're in this last week of our series called Choose Joy. Choose Joy. On the count of three, everybody say, Choose Joy. One, two, three. Choose Joy. Choose Joy. We need to choose joy in our world. Can I get an amen? 2020's been a wild ride, man. It's been a wild year for, for us to say the least, and Choosing joy is something that every Christian needs to learn how to do. And I thought it would be appropriate in week four of this series to go ahead and title this message, Choosing Joy in the Storm. 
in the storm. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's August now. Here we are, August 2nd. Can you believe it's August already, right? And it's August. It's hot outside, sunshiny day. You know, it's probably not going to rain today. But at the end of the day, we know what? In our future, there's going to be a storm day. There's going to be a day where things aren't going to go quite right. It's going to be a little chaotic outside. And it's the same to be said in our lives. Today might be a good day. Man, I hope today's a good day for you. I hope you woke up going, today's going to be an awesome day. I hope you felt that. By the, by the way, I want to say to this lady right here, I don't know you at all, but I got to say, man, I loved enjoying watching you worship your God today. That fired me up. Man, the joy of the Lord is all over you, man. Don't ever lose that. Don't ever lose that. It's just all over you. Man, it was just so evident. I, I kept, I'm sitting here by Chris, and I just kept, I just kept, man, she is just excited to be in the house of the Lord. And it wasn't about this, and it wasn't about who was, it was just, she's just connected to her God. She's close to her Lord. You can tell. Don't even know you. I can just tell. That's the way we all ought to be. We ought to be that close to the Lord. Choosing joy in the storm means even if the storm comes, you're going to be okay. Even if it's really chaotic out there, it's going to be all right. Like, like God's got your back. And so today what I want to do is I want to remind us of our scripture reading in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. We've been learning about this prophecy that Isaiah gave. And he was foretelling of one day a savior of the world was going to come and it was going to change everything. Well, hundreds of years later, Jesus shows up in the temple and he pulls out this scroll and he begins to read from Isaiah. He's reading this prophecy and after he finishes reading it, he tells everybody, by the way, oh yeah, all this, this right here, that's me. All this that they're writing about saying that it's coming, I'm here. Like I'm showing up on the scene to do everything that this prophecy is saying that the Son of God is going to do. So let's read what this prophecy is about. It says, the Spirit of the Lord God, this is Jesus saying, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. And, and I'm here to tell you today that, that his message to you, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is really good news for you. That we don't have to live in the storms of this life and let them pound us and take us out. That there is good news in Jesus Christ. It says, uh, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. People who are broken in their heart. I don't know about you, I hope you're not brokenhearted today, but I've been brokenhearted in my life before. And it's not a good, fun place to be. It's really a hard place to be. And Jesus came uh, to heal your broken heart. He came to proclaim liberty to the captives. Because there's some people listening to this right now that you're captive to your fear. That quite honestly, fear has just isolated you from everything. Um, you're, you're captive, some of you, uh, you're, you're captive to, to depression and anxiety and worry. Like it has just held you. And he's saying, listen, I'm proclaiming liberty to captives, to anybody who's living that lifestyle. Then he goes on, he says, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Because there's some of you who are bound to some of your prisons uh, of addiction. You've got some, some alcoholic addictions right? And you're bound to it, and you feel like, I'll never be able to not be this way. And he says, listen, I'm going to open that prison wall where you're bound. Some of you, you got that, 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 that prison uh, of not just alcoholism, but, but you've got some drugs that you've been putting into your body, and you've been ingesting, and, and, and you think, you know, that's going to give you that high in that moment. And let me tell you, the reason we run to these things is because we have a lack of joy in our life. And so what happens is we're looking for joy anywhere we can find it, and we look Instead of looking to Jesus, who is the author of joy, right, we look to sinful things. Now, sin, I'm not going to get up here and tell you it isn't fun. I'm going to tell you the truth today. Sin is fun. If it wasn't fun, nobody would be doing it. But the problem with sin is that sin gives a temporary, temporary joy. It's this high for a moment, and then it's a really low low. So you're going to go high as you get that alcohol and you're going to start to feel good. And then the problem is, uh, after the high comes, then the low comes. You wake up the next day and you got your head in the toilet vomiting all over the place because alcohol overtook your day. Right? Uh, you wake up on the ground somewhere. You don't even know what happened the night before. Your friends are explaining. You're going, that didn't happen. You go, yes, it did happen that way. Right? Because sin felt good in the moment. The problem was sin does not sustain you and give you joy in the long run. Sin harms you, and, and it's the aftertaste that tastes real bad. Y'all with me? Say yes. Okay. Yeah. So he said, there's, there's this prison that some of y'all are bound to. He says, I want you to experience more than what you have right there. Some of you, you're bound to a prison of pornography, quite honestly, and it's overtaking your life. And he said, I came, Jesus showed up, 
the Son of God, to open the prison to those who are bound. That's really good news. Then he says, I'm going to comfort all of you who are in mourning. Because some of y'all, you've been in mourning, and you've been in this depressed state. Maybe you lost somebody who was very close to you. Maybe you had a dear friend. Maybe you had a friend that moved away, and it just broke you. And you have this kind of mourning going on. Maybe, maybe COVID-19 has been a, a season of mourning, quite honestly, where, where the connectedness that we once had, maybe you had these relationships and you were close and you were deep and saw each other every day, but now, you know, you're in mourning, man, because you don't have that anymore. And he says, I'm here to comfort all those in mourning. And then look at the amazing trade deal that God wants to make with us, all right? This is the best trade deal in the history of all of trade deals, all right? I know I sound like Donald Trump up here. This is the best trade deal in the history of all of trade deals. Let me show it to you, okay? He says, I'm going to give beauty for your ashes. You've been walking around with ashes, and he says, I want to give you something good instead of those ashes. He says, I want to trade you the oil of joy for your mourning. You're walking around miserable, and I want to give you some joy in your life. Man, that's good. That's good scripture right there. He says, I'm going to give you the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness that you're carrying. There's, yeah, oh, thank you, Jesus, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me get that right there. Chris, throw that up here. Anthony, throw that up here. This is what this looks like, man. You got to actively say, I want to pursue the garment of praise. I'm going to go out looking for it. I'm going to find it, and I'm going to wear it. I'm going to put it on my life because, listen, I'm going to choose to be happy in my life. It is a choice that I'm going to make. By the way, I feel better up here. It's a little cold up here. Up here. I don't know what's going on, but he said, man, this, this feels better we got to put the garment of praise on. It means you don't start with it on. you got to go find it and put it on. Yeah. Guys, you can have all these traits. I'm here to tell you really good news. Everybody that's looking at this right now, you go, those are good trade deals. There ain't nobody listening to this or watching it online campus. I go, that's a bad trade. <laughs> Keep the ashes. No, you're like, nobody. <laughs> nobody. Right? Because we know that the, the spirit of mourning is, 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 you know, it's for the birds, man. We ain't got time for that. Right? And, and this, this garment of praise for our spirit of heaviness, we don't want to be heavy. We don't want to be heavy in our lives. We don't want to live discouraged and depressed. We want, there's got to be something better than this. And there is. This is the trade that God wants to make. So that, look at this, this is the best part of the scripture. So that we may be called trees of righteousness. This is the planting of the Lord. Meaning, when we experience this trade happen, and we walk around with the garment of praise on, Think about a big oak tree. I'm talking about a massive one, like big. Like you go to put your arms around it to hug it, and you can't even get your arms around the trunk of the tree all the way. Like you maybe get like halfway around, right? Because it's just got this massive trunk just holding this thing up. Imagine a car trying to plow into that tree. That tree don't move. The car disintegrates into a thousand pieces because it, it hits it, but it's the, listen, we're called the trees of righteousness. It's the planting of the Lord, meaning when the hard times come, when the wind blows, when the storms come all over us, we don't disintegrate. We're planting of the Lord that He may be glorified. And then, because we're this planting of the Lord, we have this trade happen that's, that's so good for us, we shall rebuild old ruins, and we shall raise up former desolations. And we shall repair ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Jesus literally shows up and said, I came to do all this, and I came to give you this. This is an amazing, amazing deal that we can have. So let me just simplify it. Simplify all that to say, we can trade heaviness for joy. We can trade heaviness for joy. And so many people are walking around with that backpack full of stones and rocks, and it's weighing you down. You're trying to climb through this life, and God's like, dude... You want me to carry that for you, bro? Like, let me trade you that. I'll just give you this feather instead. Let me just give you this feather instead. Here's how he says it in Matthew. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I'd venture to say that probably a lot of people listen to this right now. You, you've been wearied in your life and you've been burdened in your life. He says, come to me and I will give you that four-letter word. They're so, so good. He says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest sounds pretty good right now, amen? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's literally, I'm going to give you this feather for that backpack full of rocks. It's so light when you follow Jesus. Your life, you live life differently when you build your life the right way. 
So let's talk about the storms of life as they come. Because in Mark, one of my favorite storm stories, Mark chapter 4, tells us about this massive storm that was coming. That day when evening came, Jesus says to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So in other words, here we are, but, but I want us to, to land here. And Jesus knew that, that, hey, in going from here to here, we're actually, he's going to, being God Almighty, knowing everything, he's going to see a storm come. Like, in order to go from here to here, you're going to have to go through a storm first. He knew it. And he says, let's go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats out there in the water with him. So there's all these boats. He's like, let's go from here to here. Then I love the Bible. A furious squall came up, right? Uh, I don't know if you've had a furious squall come up in your life where you get a really bad storm. And it's a furious squall, squall. You know, a furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat. Like, literally, the water is coming into the boat. Like, I've been there in my life where things are so bad where it's like, dude, the water is in the boat. It's not like, if I know anything about sailing, you don't put the water in the boat, right? Like, the water stays outside the boat. The water was in the boat, so it was nearly swamped. It was literally sinking. Jesus, though, look at this. Oh, gosh. Jesus, where was he? He's in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. He's just getting some rest, man. Get a little shut eye in, just, just, just peaceful, calm. Which, by the way, in the middle of the waves crashing and the storms and all the stuff that happens in your life, can I just tell you today that Jesus never has a freak out moment? There's never a moment in time where he says, oh, quick, uh, get, get the Holy Spirit and get God in here. Uh, I need to have an emergency meeting. I didn't see this storm coming. Like, I don't know what we're going to do. Somebody hit the, like, hit the like, panic button. That never happens with him. He's literally sleeping on a cushion, getting some shut-eye. The disciples woke him, and they said to him what you and I would be saying, Teacher, don't you even care if we drown? And that's how it feels out here in this life. It's like, man, 2020's been a good year. (laughs) I don't know what you were thinking. It's been a good year. And, 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 and And we're like, you know, God, we're drowning out here. Like, do you even care about us? And and so that's what they asked him, and he got up, and he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, he said, quiet, be still, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Oh, uh uh-oh, do you still have no faith? And I venture to say that in the midst of all this, first of all, I want to, I want to point out that all God has to do is just look at our little storm and say, quiet, be still, and it's gone. That's the first observation right there. All he's, by, by the way, he doesn't even have to speak the words. He could just look the direction. Y'all know this with your kids, right? Like, I don't have to say anything to my kids. I just look at my kid. <laughs> sits up straight, and he gets all proper. You know, okay, I'll stop messing with my brother, right? I just look at him. That's all God has to do. If he wants to calm that storm in your life, he just look your way. That thing just dies down. It cowers at the name of Jesus, right? Quiet, be still, it died down. But then I would also say that in the midst of all the storms that we face, I think Jesus would look at us and say the exact same sentence. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Do you still have no faith? And then they were terrified, the Bible says, and they asked each other, who is this guy? (laughs) This isn't a normal person we're talking to here. Even the wind and the waves obey this man. Like, they had their eyes open to the goodness of God. Amen? It was like, wow, that's a powerful person right there. That even the wind and the waves obey him. And I'm hoping today that as I talk about building your your life, as we talk about what God's word says about building our lives, that God would open your eyes to, to the truth that, man, even the wind and waves obey that guy. Like, he is somebody worth giving your time investment into. Uh, take a moment to consider this. Anybody ever tried to build a house before? You've, you've built a house. Not you yourself, but like you had a house built for you. Come on now. You put a, I know some of y'all have. Come on now. Lots of people. Okay, good, good, good. So, so there is a process to build a house. Like you can't just go out there and, oh, here's some dirt. Uh, let's just start painting some walls. Well, there's no walls to paint, right? You have to, you have to actually build something. You have to actually do it. You can't just go out there with a bunch of two-by-fours and start screwing them all together. And, oh, we're putting a house right here. Well, what about the important foundation, right? Like there's a process that has to be created in order for that house to stand the test of time. Otherwise, when a tornado comes or a storm comes, that thing might just fall over. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a great builder. 
Like, I'm not, I have no business being out there doing anything to do with carpentry. I really don't. I'll do it, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I think it's important for us to have people or things around us that can show us what to do in our lives, to build our lives. So today, I want to just spend a few moments. If we're going to get through the storms, I think it's important to talk about you as the house. You as the house. How do we build our lives to where there's this firm, firm foundation in our lives? Well, it starts with the foundation, number one. The foundation of our house is Jesus. This has to become something that every person in this room says, that's me. Not something that pastor taught, not something he put up on a screen. We go, that's me. That's my house. That's my life. That's my body. That's who I am as an individual. Because at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to have to stop borrowing your pastor's faith, and you're going to have to start having some faith for yourself. Can I get an amen? Some of y'all got scared about that. You're like, I can't borrow your faith. Listen, I'll tell you all about my faith, but it's up to you to get in God's word and to determine whether your faith is my faith. Okay, and if you're reading the same Bible I'm reading, then our faiths are going to match up pretty clearly, right? If you're not, we're going to be on two different pages. But it all starts with this foundation of our house is Jesus. Foundation, foundation. Think about it. You're out there in the grass. You're out there in the dirt. You don't just start putting stuff up. You go, what are we building this thing on? Because if this thing isn't built on something firm, man, when it gets wet outside, it's just going to sink. There's going to be foundation issues. It's going to crumble. This house will not stand. Now, you might get it up for a second, and it might look pretty on the outside, but will it stand the test of time? Will it stand the storms that come? This is so important in our lives that we have a firm foundation. And listen, people are building their lives on all sorts of foundations, but there's no foundation like Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the firm foundation. Look how David said it in Psalms. He says, the Lord is my rock. That's what I think about. When I think about foundation, I think of concrete. I think of hard. I think of rock. The Lord is my rock. He's my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He's the one that, that we, we, we build this whole thing around. Now, people, though, they go, I don't know if I want to go follow Jesus. And the reason they go, I don't know if I want to serve, and I want to volunteer, and I want to give, and I want to make a difference, and I want to be plugged into the church and be one of those church people. The reason they have that mentality is because they don't really understand the heart of God. Like, I'm just being truthful with you today. If you knew the heart of God, you would go, oh, man, God, he wants to make good deals with me. He wants to make good trades in my life, and he has good thoughts and plans for my future. And because of that, I absolutely want to go all in with Jesus. Like, there wouldn't be a hesitation at all. The problem is the world's got it backwards in their thinking. They're like, if I come to God and I try to follow God, he's going to take all my joy away. He's going to take all my fun away. I'm not going to do anything that I want to do. And, and I'm, it's going to all be bad. That is the exact opposite of what God wants for you. Look at it in the Scripture. Scripture tells us this. For I know the plans that I have for you declares our God. He says, my plans for you are plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Like, you've got it backwards. Jesus isn't a bad dude. He isn't your enemy. He's the best tag team partner you'll ever have, but you've got to learn to tag him in. He says, i got plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a future. I've got hope and a future for you. And so many people here are living hopeless today, living hopeless whenever God wants you to live with hope, live with him. God is our firm foundation. Then think about it. Once you get that slab of concrete down in the middle of the dirt somewhere, right, you get that concrete laid, that firm foundation then the structure begins to go up. And some of you guys have seen this. In our area, man, these houses go up all the time, right? They're always putting up new structures everywhere. And you see all those two-by-fours that are screwed together. And it's like, what are they building over there? What is that? Oh, oh they're building a house over there. Man, oh, okay, okay, that's a big house over there, right? You see all that stuff, and you start seeing it. Oh, that's where the roof's going to be laid. All of a sudden, you can start picturing in your mind what that house looks like because of that structure that's there. Y'all know with me? You with me, Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so the structure of our house in our lives for our house is built with our prayer and our Bible reading. The structure of our house that actually shows what this thing's going to look like and, and what the final design's going to come to, it, it's all built. This structure is built on prayer and Bible reading. And guys, those that have houses that blow down pretty quickly, and when the storms come, they have no joy. If you're walking around with no joy in your life, it's because you haven't built your house right. Your foundation, you might know of Jesus, but Jesus is just kind of on the site somewhere. He ain't the general contractor. Can I get an amen? amen? 
okay? And at the end of the day, either you're going to try to be the general contractor that you, if you're like me, you have no business being the general contractor out there. You don't know how to build that thing. By the way, when you go to put those two by fours up, there's all these code issues that you'll run into, right? And then, you know, the spacing between each two by four has to be so many inches apart. And then in order for the electrical to run right, it has to have certain, you know, conduit that goes a certain way. And there's all this structure stuff on the inside. It's the bones of the house. Without the bones, nothing else can get applied quite right. And the whole house doesn't come together without the proper foundation and the proper structure. But our foundation and our structure is built on prayer and Bible reading. Prayer and Bible reading. People that don't have this part of their life down, this prayer and Bible reading part, they're the ones that keep blowing over. You know what you keep doing? Let's build a house. Let's build a house. Let's build a house. So you keep falling over. How many times do you want to fall over in this thing? Y'all like that? Y'all like getting hurt? <laughs> okay. Like, I always ask my kids that, like, how many times are you going to jump off that thing, dude? Every time, I, like, my kids, they, they're crazy. Y'all have crazy kids say yes? I got crazy kids. They jump off the top of the bunk bed, and they're, like, <laughs> on the floor, and they do it, like, they do it in trails. Because I got four kids. So, like, the third one comes down, and by far, Jace, every time, he's, ah, like, sprains his ankle every time he does it. Every time, I'm like, how many times are you going to jump off that ledge and sprain your ankle before you realize you probably shouldn't do that? And we look at that and we go, oh, yeah, we can identify with the kid. That's just so dumb. Why would they do that? Yeah, we build our lives like this every day. Every day. Put that house up. We're putting all this work in. Strenuous sweat and tears, blood, you know. Put that up. Splinters in our hands. We're doing all that. And then our storm comes in our life and blows us down. Our prayer and Bible reading is real weak. Two action steps to build good structure. Two action steps. Read the Bible every day. Listen, one day a week ain't cutting it, dude. One day a week ain't cutting it, bro. It's not going to be enough. It's not that the word isn't good. It's just you need it every day. Same as whenever you nurture your body physically, you have to nurture your body spiritually. And the way you do that is you've got to get it God's word in your heart. See, because if you'll get into God's word, God's word will get into you. And that's what you need. If you're going to have a good structure for your life, you want to build a good house, man, it starts right here, guys. There's an app called Version. okay? Take a moment right now. Pull out your phone. I'll give everybody permission. Pull out your phone. Back in the old school days, you pulled out your phone, you get a spanking, right? My, my dad said, hey, put that phone away, right? But at my church, I want you to pull your phone out, right? Pull your phone out, and I want you to download this app called Version. It's for free. It's for free, okay? Tons of daily devotionals that you can read through on here. Any area of your life that you're wanting to learn more about, whether it be joy, depression, fear, you know, uh, uh, parenting, finances, anything. You type that in the keyword, and there will be lots of devotionals for you to read. And let me tell you, I'm so proud of a bunch of you guys doing this right now, by the way. You need to get in God's Word. You need to get in God's Word. And when you do that, it's going to start building a structure in your life that when storms come, you don't freak out. You don't freak out. I'm tired of freaking out whenever there's a problem in life. By the way, there's going to be lots of problems in your life. Part of this garment of praise is the ability to go, even though there's a storm going on, I can remain joyful. Even though the world is filled with chaos, I still got this presence on the inside of me that's going, everything's going to be okay, man. What are y'all freaking out about? Like, it's all right. Remember the Bible, he said, he said, oh, ye of little faith. We have little faith because you haven't allowed God's word to really be downloaded in your spirit. And it's got to be an everyday process. Now, imagine if you didn't feed yourself until next Sunday. Like nothing. I'm talking no food. Some of y'all look a lot skinnier, right? <laughs> it's like, it's going to be what it's going to be. Some of y'all, some of y'all though, are going to look too skinny. Some of y'all are going to look frail. Some of y'all are going to be weak. Some of y'all aren't going to even be able to be walking around and moving, right? Because you, you just don't have the energy. Imagine what we do to our bodies spiritually. We don't, we don't nurture it daily, and then we walk around going, God, I'm so frustrated that you let this happen to me. And we begin to blame God instead of owning the fact that we have not built this structure right. We have not built this right. The second thing here, you read your Bible every day. And then number two is you need to ignite your prayer life. You ignite your prayer life. This is so, so, so important because prayer is whenever God can really, you talk to God, but God can really talk to you. Every day at 10 a.m. right here in this room, for the next 21 days, right, we're in 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're going to have uh, each staff member is going to be given a daily devotional, 
uh, to kind of kick things off, to give us our theme for the day of kind of what to pray for and teach us what to pray. Uh, but in that, uh, this igniting of our prayer life, you're going to experience a closeness to God like you've never experienced before. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to tell you those first five days are going to be awkward. Uh-oh. It's not going to feel real joyful in that moment because you're going to come and you're going to be like, what's this? Oh, man, I'm uncomfortable. And you know what? That is so healthy for you. That is so healthy for you. I want you to put yourself in the uncomfortable, the unknown of, God, I don't really even know what to pray. And then there's going to be moments of time where we're going we're gonna to lead you in prayers. We're going to give you a lot of sample prayers. There are going to be a lot of prayer requests, prayer needs for people that have filled out these cards in our church. Which, by the way, if you've got a prayer need, I encourage you to fill out the back of your communication card. Let us know what those prayer needs are. We're going to be praying for 21 days. We'll pray for you, right? There's all that, but there's also going to be times where we're going to say, hey, take the next five minutes, and I want you to just sit there and don't say anything and don't do anything. I want you to just listen to God. Some of you haven't had five minutes where you've had nothing going on, like completely nothing, like no devices, no phones, not checking email, not surfing, like literally just God speak to me. You are going to get so close to God over the next 21 days if you'll just put this out there in your life. But you've got to ignite your prayer life. And let me just give you one more little tidbit about prayer that we're getting into. Prayer is not just relationship with God. It's actually confrontation with the enemy, the devil. And that's what we're going to do, too. Because here's the deal. I'm just quite honestly, I'm sick and tired of Christians getting their rear ends kicked by the enemy. He's gotten away with it for too long, and we're going to confront him. We're going to put him back in his place. And we're going to say, you're not messing with me. You're not messing with my spouse. You're not messing with our finances. You're not messing with my family. You're not messing with my kids. You're not messing with my future. You can't have us. That's what we need. That's where we're going. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. With that being said, you got this foundation that starts with Jesus. That everything you do, if Jesus isn't a one day a week guy, he's a, he's a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. The foundation is Jesus Christ. We come back to him for every problem that we have. We get in his word and we pray to him. We ignite our prayer life. That's that structure going up. The foundation and the structure. Then there's this third piece, if you're taking notes, that's so important. The decor of our house is based upon what we choose. The decor, the decor. You think about the decor. Now, everybody, you know, you have a place that you're going to that you live in right now, right? Everybody's got, whether it's an apartment, a house, a condo, something. You live somewhere, and when you go into people's houses, you notice um, the structure is usually the same, right? Because it's all built with the two-by-fours and all that, and the conduit, and, and then the foundation, it's always kind of on that, that solid slab, right? But then when you go into people's houses, the decor is whatever they choose. So you go into somebody's house and they're like, man, I just like white walls everywhere. You know, I just, I, I like the clean look. Some of y'all like the clean look and you're like, just white walls, man. Like, like if there's color, paint over that. Let's make this thing white. You know, white sheets, white bedspread, you know, white furniture, a white rug, you know, like white towels, whites. This is the decor. Like, I like it like this. And then there's other you that you're a little different. You go, no, 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 no. The decor, the decor needs to be colorful, right? So when you come into my house, it's like <laughs> splash of color like you know, the rainbow just collided into your house, right? For those of you watching in our online campus today, the, uh, the lady up here is my wife. She does have purple hair, okay? It's not a camera miscue. Uh, she has purple hair, and I love her purple hair, and I love that, that she loves her purple hair, right? And we, by the way, we don't care whether you like her purple hair. We're not concerned about you. What you think about it, we didn't ask you. Amen. Woo! So freeing not to worry. Just not worried about it, all right? But, but at the end of the day, everybody's got the, the, the decor of what they want to bring to the table. Like so some people, they go, oh, that's just so chaotic and everywhere. Go back to the white. You know, like, like but it, this is just too much. And then there's other people with their decor. Look. You think about the door to their house. They're like, oh, we just need the clean look, simple, fresh, right? Then there's other people like, no, 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 no. We need a big, massive welcome sign out here. We got to get some pumpkins out there. You want white? I'll give you a white pumpkin, all right? White pumpkin, get a little wreath on the door. This needs to be an inviting decor place, right? Then you meet other people from time to time because we all get to choose whatever decor we want, right? And the outside of our house is some of us, um, not welcome. <laughs> Go away. Then look at this guy over here, he's like, yeah, no solicitors, right? This is, but we all, we all get a choice on the decor that we choose. 
Everybody has this. And at their house, your house looks different than my house. Everybody's house looks different, right? The decor, we get to choose. Let me tell you some choices you've made that on the outside of your house either are inviting for other people or they're not. Okay? Because that foundation was important. Because if the foundation was there and the structure of Bible reading and prayer is, is working in your life the right way, then let me tell you something. The fruit of the Holy Spirit of God is present in your life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, goodness, meekness, gentleness, self-control. If you've got the foundation right and the structure right, these things just outwardly are displayed. The decor shines bright. Let me show you uh, some choices you've made about decor. What does your decor look like? Do you smile a lot or do you frown a lot? got real quiet in here all of a sudden. What happened? We were having so much fun until I went right there. What? Oh, ooh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> the foundation, Jesus, prayer and Bible reading, the structure, because if it's working right and we're into it the right way, and this is, this is how it's going to tell on you, and it tells on me too, just like it tells on you. It tells on us whether or not we've been doing these things. We're either going to be able to turn that frown upside down. Come on, baby. <laughs> turn that frown upside down. Some of us are more positive, and some of us are more negative. Some of us, we wake up and we go, today's going to be a great day. And somebody's going, are you kidding me? <laughs> today's 21 days of prayer and fasting, Anthony. We're not going to get to eat anything that we want. Other people are going, it's 21 days of prayer and fasting, man. We're going to get rid of that garbage so we can get close to our Lord. Can I get an amen? All right? We get rid of that social media. Oh, I'm not going to be able to be on social media for 21 days. Oh, man. You got to turn that frown upside down. Get positive, not negative. Some of y'all are optimistic. You're optimistic. Oh, man, the best is yet to come. Some of y'all are like, uh-uh. It's 2020. It's election year, baby. Can I just tell you, man, I, I'd be all messed up too if, I, if my hope was found in Joe Biden or my hope was found in Donald Trump or my hope was found in somebody else. My, my president is Jesus, guys. Jesus is my presidente, okay? Like Jesus for president, man. You follow Jesus, it changes everything. My hope and my optimism and pessimism doesn't found in those guys. Stop following those dudes. Stop trying to make that your, your hope and your savior. If that's your hope and your savior, no wonder you're so unhappy in your life. Somebody's speaking truth to y'all. Y'all just don't want to hear it. That's okay. Some of y'all are fun. Some of y'all are buzzkill, man. <laughs> Some of y'all are fun. This lady right here is fun. I like this lady right here. I already told you I couldn't. She's fun. You can just tell. Other people, though, they're... <laughs> Worship's going on. They're like... You think I'm lying. I saw you, bro. You were standing right there, man. <laughs> standing right there. I was like, I got eyes. Like, the mask is on my mouth, not my eyes, right? And so, so <laughs> some of y'all are buzzkill, though. They're like, you know how to kill a mood faster than anybody. Somebody comes in, I got a brilliant idea. Let me tell you nine reasons why that won't work. <laughs> Go away, man. Go away. Right? <laughs> the decor of our lives. Y'all wear this stuff every day. And here's what's interesting. You can choose to take whatever decor off that you want. And you can choose to add any decor on that you want. You get to choose all this. Nobody made you, oh, I just woke up this way. <laughs> when my kid wakes up that way, I tell him to put a different mood on. Go put a different face on, Mr. Potato Head. All right, like, let's change that thing up. Some of y'all are hopeful, and some of y'all are hopeless, and some of y'all are joyful, and some of y'all are depressed. You choose the decor that you wear in your life. So what decor are you walking around with? If you don't know for sure what decor you're walking around with, ask your spouse. They'll tell you. <laughs> then don't bite their head off when they tell you what you asked them. We got to choose joy, guys. Got to choose joy. Here's what Matthew chapter 7 says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. In other words, translation 2020, modernize it. Wise people do what I just taught you. Not my word, it's God's word. Wise people take to heart what was just told to them. Everyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice. Not good enough that you sat in a seat and heard it. You have to put it into practice. Those people are like wise people who built their house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, beat against the house. Mm -hmm. 
Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words, no, don't miss this of mine, and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Are you going to be wise or are you going to be foolish? The Apostle Paul was teaching people how to build their house, and he was saying, listen, there's a lot of you that have became followers of Jesus. You've prayed a prayer, right, but you've not grown in your faith. And he says, I need you to mature up as a believer. You need to grow in your faith and in your walk with Christ. And quite honestly, I'm going to teach through this right now because I think that we need to grow in our walk with Christ. We need to become spiritually mature. Lots of people in here that proclaim, hey, I know who Jesus is, but you don't follow Jesus with your life. You prayed a prayer, and that's as far as it's gone. It's time to grow up in Christ. Look what the scripture says. He says, he's teaching them that, that, hey, God has set up some people in your life to help you. And he's telling them who they are and what their purpose is. He says, so Christ himself, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, hey, woo, small group teachers, woo, there y'all are out there, right? To do this, he gave you these people in your life to equip you, his people, for works of service so that the body of Christ, the house of God, the church might be built up. In other words, you have me in your life, Anthony, and other leaders in your life to train you up, to equip you to be ready for works of service, to go make a difference in your world. And then he says, until we all reach unity. Can we get an amen that we need some unity today? He says, until we all reach unity in our faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. It's not good to know about God. We have to have the knowledge of the Son of God. Like, let's, let's download it. Stop borrowing my faith. Get your own faith. Until we all grow in the knowledge of the Son of God and we become mature. No more being a baby Christian. It's time to grow. Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Attaining the whole measure. In other words, get all that God has to offer you. Stop just taking little bites of it. Come get all of it, man. You get the whole piece of the pie, not just a bite. Right? So good. So good. Then we will be, no, don't miss it. We will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves. Here it comes again, the storms of life. When you're a baby Christian, when you're an infant in Christ, tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching, somebody comes and says, oh, you know, Jesus now says you can do this. And you just believe him because you don't know what God's word says. You need to know what God's word says for yourself. So when you hear false teaching, you know that's false teaching. Let me go ahead and tell you this. You should look up every scripture I ever put up on this screen and make sure it says what it says it says. I invite you to do that. And as long as you read the same Bible I read, God's word, we ain't going to have no issues. Usually when there's an issue, it's because somebody out there, one of y'all, are kind of going haywire on this stuff. Uh, that's not what God says, right? We always come back to the truth of God's word for everything. Otherwise, we're going to be blown here and there and taken out, listen, by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. There are people out there going to deceitfully scheme against you, and they're going to confuse you when it comes to doctrine, if you don't know what God's word says. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. We're going to grow and we're going to mature as believers. The foundation, the structure, prayer and Bible reading, and then the outside decor is the choice that we make to choose true joy. It says this, For him, the whole body joined and held together by, don't miss it, by every supporting ligament. That's you. We all have a supporting part that we play together. It grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. In other words, there's some work to be done here. There's some work to be done in your family, in your life, in your, you as a husband, you as a wife, you, you as, a, as, as a teenager, right, as, as a student. This is so important that you play your part and you do your work. This is a big deal. And when we do this, these things promise to produce great joy in our lives. Now, real quick, as we get ready to close this message down, anybody scared of flying? You don't like flying. Maybe you'll do it, but you don't like it. Come on, put your hand up. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to raise your hand, too, all right? It is, you just don't like it. Something about it just doesn't sit well within you. Well, that's me, man. I do not like flying. I get scared. I'm scared of heights. I, I, I worry about things out there because I'm like, Dude, these elements out here ain't any good. I was going from uh, Dallas to Minnesota to a pastor's conference, and I was really excited to go on this conference until the day of. 
Day of, I drive to the airport, and, you know, all this storm report was going haywire, and I'm like, dude, it's going to be a bad storm. So much so that I'm like, they might cancel the flight. They might cancel the flight. I'm not sure if they're going to keep this thing going. Uh, we get there, you know, we go into the line, we get boarded on the plane. I'm on the plane, and it's pouring, and it's loud outside. Like, the thunder is loud, the lightning is chaotic, and, and it's just pouring, 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 pouring. And I'm looking out the window, and I'm getting more and more scared. Because I'm like, dude, this is not right. And they're on the intercom. The, the pilot is just being apologetic the whole time. Hey, guys, sorry we haven't been able to, to take off yet. Uh, we're a little delayed. We're waiting for a storm to come by. And as soon as the storm goes by, we might be able to get up in the air. But right now, we're just pausing, uh, hoping to get in the air soon. And you're like, dude, shut this plane down, bro. Let's just go home. <laughs> like, you're not sure. <laughs> You're not sure if we're going to be able to do it. Let's just stop. Let's just not try. Like, I don't want to be the guinea pig on, like, could we do it? Maybe. Maybe we couldn't. <laughs> they, could, they couldn't do it. Sorry, right? I don't want to be the guinea pig for that. So I'm in there. I'm listening to all that. Finally, 45 minutes go by. And, and like, guys, you know what it's like on that plane when they don't have the air thing on. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And you're just like, there's no oxygen in this room, right? No oxygen in here. And we're all about to die. And finally gets on. He's like, Hey, guys, the storm is still going out there. Here's what he said. The storm is still going out there, uh, but I believe that we're going to be okay to go ahead and take off. So everybody, you know, the, buckle your seats. And I'm like, dude, what did he just say? <laughs> dude, what do you mean you believe? Like, your judgment call in this thing. Like, what do you do, flip a coin up there? Like, I think we can make it? And, 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 and so he, he says this, and in my mind, if I'm the pilot, I'm like, dude, we're not even going up in the air right now. Because my mind starts thinking about all the what ifs. I looked at through that, through that little, little, you know, tube, <laughs> little, little, little glass uh, window, and I'm looking down at, at, the, at the, the wet pavement, and I'm thinking, as this thing tries to accelerate the wheels, and, and it's just so slippery out there, what if, for whatever reason, something doesn't work right, and we just go straight forward, and we, like, plow into the building or something? Like, I don't know what's ahead on this runway. I don't know what's, like, what if that happens? I, I, I'm like, what if we get going up in the air, and it's raining so hard up there, because it was still horrible out there horrible, horrible, horrible. And it gets so wet that the motor gets too wet and it starts smoking and we like fall out of the sky. Like, you know, like I'm thinking worst case scenario. Worst case. Anybody ever been in this situation where it's real turbulent up there? Come on now. And we're, we're, we're ascending. We're ascending. And guys, I could feel every muscle in my body. I used every muscle in my body. I'm sitting there in that seat just gripping and I'm like, I'm like, mommy, you know, like I'm scared, dude. I'm scared. I'm sweating. I'm feeling everything. There's sweat all over my body. And I'm like, this is not going to go well. And we're getting through, 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 ascending, ascending. And there's that turbulence. You know, where, where, your, where your heart just falls into the bottom of your stomach. Y'all know that feeling? Ugh, it's horrible, 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 horrible. And, you know, there's this little, little girl looking out the window as if there's no problem. You know, she's just look, looking at everything. I'm like, shut the window. Shut the window. <laughs> shut the window. Right? I'm scared of that window. Shut that window. And it's amazing, though, as we finally got up past those clouds, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, once you get up there and you open that window, you get past those clouds, you see like a beautiful ray of sunshine. This isn't the actual picture, but this is a picture. You get above those clouds, there's this beautiful ray of sunshine. Oh, pastor's got a point to make today. Yes, I do. The sun is still shining when you rise above the storm. Joy can be found above the storm. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. amen. We must choose joy. Everybody on the count of three, we must choose joy. One, two, three. We must choose joy. We must choose joy. With your head's bowed and your eyes closed at this time. Man, God wants you to experience joy in your life. And if you've been missing it, you've got a three-step action process today. Build your life on Jesus. Make him first in everything that you do. This isn't about church attendance. This is about putting yourself in a position to be closer to your God. To that foundation. You build that structure with your prayer and your Bible reading. Let's get that going, guys. I'm, I'm trying to help you the best I can, guys. Give you the best I got. Let's get in our Bibles. Let's read God's Word. Let's pray. Let's connect to him. Let's get close to our God. And then let's let, as the Holy Spirit is working inside of us, let the, the day card just be so welcoming and inviting. Let's smile more than we frown. Let's change that.
let's do something different. God wants that for you. He wants you to have his joy. There's some of you in the room today that you've not started your relationship with God. And if that's you, I'm actually going to put a prayer up on the screen. If you want to look up here, this is a prayer that just says, God, I want to invite you to be part of my life. I understand you died on that cross for me, and I accept that into my life. Just repeat this after me if you want to choose Jesus. Say, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus for me. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for doing life my way. Show me your way. Fill me with your spirit. Guide me by your word. Make me who you created me to be. Amen. Church, welcome people into the family of God. Come on now. Woo! All right, all right, all right. What a great day in the house of God. What a great day. If you just prayed that prayer, you got two options that you can let us know. Fill out on your communication card. Let us know, I made a decision to follow Jesus today. Or pull out your phone. Go ahead and do that again. And text the word new me to the number on the screen, 31996. And if you let me know you prayed that prayer, I promise I'm going to follow up with you and send you some information by way of email that lets you know more about that prayer you prayed and gives you some next steps to follow Jesus with your life. Uh, we're going to be starting a new series this next uh, coming week, and we're going to announce that through your email on Wednesday, okay? So we'll let you know the title of that and prepare you for it. But I pray, pray that you'll join us for 21 days of prayer for all that God is doing. And uh, if you have been watching online, we can't wait to see you sometime in person. Uh, when the time is right, we will be able to do that. We're going to say goodbye to our online campus. We all help me all say goodbye online campus. One, two, three. Goodbye online campus. We're saying goodbye to them right now. and we got